Are you tired of creating dull, boring plots that look kind of like this? Would you rather make simply stunning graphics that look a little bit more like this? If you answered yes to this question, then this is the video series for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm the part-time economist, and in this video series, my goal is to help you turbocharge your data visualization capabilities and make graphics that absolutely pop. Now, I'll be honest with you, there is a lot to learn. We're not going to learn every single thing that you need to know about ggplot and graphing in the R programming language in a single video. It will be a journey, but it is a journey that I am going to help you with every step of the way. So we're going to break things down. Super simple. Each video will cover maybe one or two key topics so we don't get confused and we will slowly build up that skill set. That being said, we have got to start somewhere and this is video number one. So it is going to be very beginner focused. If you are not a beginner, you're more than welcome to watch this video, but a lot of it might be a review. So with that being said, how do we start? Well, obviously the first step is to install both the R programming language and R studio. These are completely free pieces of software that work on Windows, Linux, Mac, pretty much every operating system, right? So download, install those. And then once you get those set up, there are two packages that we're going to be working with throughout this course. Now, the first package is the Tidyverse. This is simply a collection of data analysis packages that contain the ggplot function that we're going to work with in this course. So if you don't already have that on your system, you are going to use the install.packages command and then put tidyverse inside of the quotation marks that will install it on your system. But that is not enough. You also need to pull it into the workspace using the tidyverse command. Then you're going to do the same thing for the Palmer Penguins package. Now the Palmer Penguins package is just a data set about penguins. It has a variety of different variables, what their species is, what island they live on, how long their bill is, right? doesn't really matter the specific data that we're using. Uh, but since this is a tutorial, I wanted everyone to be on the same page using the same data so that we can ask questions and help each other out. It gets problematic if everyone is using their own data, but please obviously keep in mind if you're doing this in real life, you can use your own data set, right? So with that being said, we've got the penguins data set. We've got the tidyverse. How do we actually create some plots? Well, the key thing to know about the R programming language is there are a variety of ways to create plots. You can use the histogram command. You can use the plot command. I'm going to be teaching you ggplot because this is the most powerful way of creating charts. It is the most extensible. And what it does is once you master the basic syntax, you can easily add different things to your charts. You can switch between chart types. It's really powerful and I think it's really worth your time to learn it if you are serious about taking your data visualization to the next level. So with that being said, when we're working with ggplot, we're always going to need two things at a bare minimum. The first is the data. We have to use the ggplot function and then we have to tell it what data are we working with. Now, obviously we're using the penguins data. If you had your own data set that maybe you had imported from an Excel spreadsheet. You might call that inflation data. You might call that stock prices, right? This is the name of the data frame that you are working with, right? So we tell ggplot, look at this data frame. Now we also need to tell it what variables within that data frame are we looking at, right? So this is the penguins data frame, but again, we have multiple different columns and we have to tell R what columns are you interested in? And the way that we do that is with the mapping command. So after we pass in the name of the data frame that we're working with, we're going to put a comma and then we're going to type mapping equals AES. Now, what is that AES? It stands for aesthetics, right? Aesthetics are the way something looks. So we are saying the way that this chart should look, we should have an X axis with the bill length and we should have a Y axis with the bill depth. And again, those names here that I'm passing in are coming from the column names in my data frame, right? If Again, if I was doing the stock price, right, maybe I would have something like the date on the X axis and I would have the closing price on the Y axis. 
Just remember, these are coming from those column names. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we run that command? Are we going to get the most beautiful chart that has ever been created, or are we going to get absolutely nothing? Well, let's see. Three, two, one. We get absolutely nothing. So, what's the problem? What's going on here? Well, the problem is that we have created a blank canvas. We've told it the data we want, we've told it the axes, but we've not told it to put any shapes, any geometries on that canvas. So let's suppose that, I mean, obviously, if we are creating a plot, we want we want something on there. The way that we're going to do that is by using the plus command. And this is why ggplot is so cool, because essentially what we can do is we can layer many different types of graphics on top of this base canvas. So let's go with geom and then underscore. And what you're going to see, look at all these different plots that we can put on this base canvas, right? So a lot of really cool things. But what we want is P-O-I-N-T, and we can use tab to autocomplete. Now watch what happens. When we run that, we get what we are looking for, right? We have that bill length in millimeters. We have the bill depth in millimeters. That is a basic plot. Is it the most beautiful plot in the world? Well, I know we're proud of it. I know it's our plot, we made it, but it's not super amazing, right? The purpose of this video is just to get you started, right? To show you the basics. And what I'm showing you here is that you have to do two steps to create your GG plot. So you've got to pass in the basic canvas, right? And that's your data, your variables, and then you have to tell it what geometries do I want, right? So obviously I have geom underscore points. And let's suppose that I wanted to make it just a little bit prettier, right? Again, beginner episode. I don't want to go too complicated, but let's just spice it up a little bit. So this here, if we were to get rid of all of this, this is exactly what we had to make this black and white chart. Now, the cool thing about it is that we can change whatever we want. And if we don't want to change something, we don't have to. So let's suppose all I want to do is I want to change the color color equals. And the way that we change color, we type color. And then inside of quotations, we put whatever color we want. So green, we can do blue. Now, if you're wondering, what are the valid color options? Can I do purple? Well, basically any color, P-U-R-P-L-E, any color that you can type by name, if it's a common color, R is probably going to recognize it. So we're doing purple. Um, but we can also change the shape of things. So S-H-A-P-E. And the way that we change shape is there are different codes that denote different types of shapes. Now, if you don't know what those are, um, you can just Google them. So shape codes in the R programming language. I'm just going to go with three. And I think this is going to make little plus signs. So yeah, we've got plus signs. And then we can also, just to show you one more thing, let's go with size. And let's go with four. Okay. So there you go, right? We've done a little bit to make it a little bit more fancy. Now, let's suppose that you didn't know. What could you change, right? You didn't know that you could change color. You didn't know that you could change the shape, right? How would you find out what you can change inside of this point geometry? The way that you're going to do that, you're going to go over here to your help tab. Go ahead and click on help. And then inside your search bar, you're going to type geom underscore point. Or if you were doing a line graph, right? You would type geom underscore line. And what you're going to do, you're going to scroll down and it is going to tell you, it's kind of towards the bottom here, it is going to tell you all of the different aesthetics that you can change, right? So you can change the color, you can change alpha, right? Which is like your transparency. You can change all of these different things, which is really cool. And if you don't know what you're trying to change, it will tell you all the valid options, which is pretty amazing. Now, Last thing before I close out this video, why did I put color, shape, and size here in geom underscore point instead of up here in ggplot? Now, this is something that I used to mess up a lot when I was first starting. The reason we put it here is because remember, like I said, we can create a lot of different geometries on top of that base canvas. So anything you put 
Think of it this way. Anything you put in that ggplot function, that is applying to your entire picture, right? So for the entire picture, we want to use the penguin's data, right? Whether we are doing a line graph, a scatter plot, it doesn't matter. We still want it to use the same data. We still want the same x and y axis, right? So anything in that ggplot function applies to the entire canvas. Now, we can add 5, 10, 15 different geometries on top of that, right? So maybe let's just suppose, for example, that I did geome underscore smooth. And don't, don't worry too much about why I'm doing this or what's going on. Um, but I've done that, right? What you can see here is that there's different geometries getting added on. And when we change color, when we change shape, when we change size, we are changing it for that geometry only, right? So I could change the geome point color, but maybe I want the smooth line color to be red or something like that. So that's the key thing to keep in mind. Anything that you put in here is applying to that specific geometry. Anything you put up here is applying to the canvas as a whole. Now, that's pretty cool. Like I said, we can do a lot more. Maybe we want to add labels. Maybe we want to change this background color from white to green, right? There's a lot more we can do. That will be for future lessons, but I hope this one has at least given you a baseline understanding of how to get started with a basic plot in the R programming language. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.